Kripka from Complete Captive Management Services. And today we wrap up our three-part series on tax. Today's conversation is the most complicated. And I feel compelled, like I did in the prior video, your specific tax treatment warrants a tax professional. I'm not that. So just take what I'm saying as a high-level overview of how underwriting profits are taxed to the insured. Before we jump into that, let's define what a profit is. I know that sounds silly, but humor me for a second. So let's assume that you buy a stock for $100, and then at some point in the future, you sell it for $120. Well, you've got a $20 profit. That profit is labeled as passive income. And passive income is taxed in one of two ways, short term or long term. Short term means if you held that security for less than 12 months, your tax rate for this $20 profit is taxed at short term capital gains. If you held it for longer than 12 months, it's taxed at long term capital gains. Now, I'm not going to get into what those tax rates are or carrying over a short term loss and offset it with a short term gain. We're not going to get into that because that's where the complexities of this discussion really sit. But we're going to apply the long term capital gains to captive insurance. So let's assume on January 1st, your captive issues a million dollars worth of premiums, policies. And then during the treaty year, you have 800,000 of SG&A expenses and claims losses. So at the end of the year, you have a $200,000 profit. Now remember from last, last video, this 200,000 is taxed at the federal level. So that means after your tax expense, you're going to be left with $158,000 of money. Now, I'm assuming that there's no run out or tail with this policy. So on January 2nd, January 3rd, you go to your captive manager and you say, hey, I want my $158,000. So what will happen is the captive manager will make a request to the domicile regulator. And that request will say something like, hey, the client wants the $158,000. The regulator is going to come back and say, now, wait a minute, what's the mission of this captive? Was the original desire to have it for 12 months and now you're liquidating? Because if that's the case, okay, you can have your $158,000. But that's usually not the case typically with captives. So let's just assume that that's the case for this scenario. The regulator is going to say, okay, you're liquidating your captive. Here's the approval letter to release the $158,000. Now, this one fifty eight is going back to the owner of the captive. This $158,000 is labeled as passive income to the owner of the captive and is therefore taxed at long-term capital gains because the captive held that for longer than 12 months. That's the trigger. But this isn't really what's going to happen. This is really what's going to happen. January 1st of this year, you issue a million dollars worth of policies. You have 800,000 of SG&A and claims, leaving $200,000 of underwriting profit. You're taxed at the federal level leaving $158,000 of cash. January 2nd, year two, you go to the regulator and say, I want my $158,000. The regulator is going to say, now wait a minute, your captive just issued a million dollars worth of policy premiums. What happens in year two if you don't have a good year? Yes, you were profitable in the first year, 
but there's no guarantees for the second year. Let's pump the brake in it and let's let that 158,000 roll over into next year. So you do that. Next year, same scenario. 200,000 of underwriting profit, you're left with $158,000. Now you're sitting on $316,000 of cash. You go to the regulator and say, hey, now we have 316,000, I want my money. Regulator's gonna say, no, no, no. What if you have a bad third year? Let's pump the brakes a minute on that $356,000. Third year, same thing. Million dollars worth of premium, 800,000 of expenses and claims. You're left with 200,000 of profit, $158,000 of free money. January 2nd of year four, you go to the regulator and say, I want my money. It's now, what is it? Almost $500,000. The regulator is gonna say, nah, what we're gonna do is we'll release this first year. We'll give you 158,000 to take out because you've demonstrated good management in your claims. So we can release this 158,000 from your first treaty year. So ultimately that goes down. You're gonna get that 158,000 at some point, roughly one, two, three, three years and two months later. So when we say, when you think about a captive investment, you're thinking long-term, and this is why. Because you're tying up money that it's gonna be tempting to take out, but the regulator's not gonna allow you generally for two or three years after each of the treaty years. So you have to be prepared for that long-term investment. So now, when, you're, when your captive issues that $358,000 check to your business, you report that $158,000 on your income statement that's recognized as passive income, you're gonna be taxed that long-term capital gains for that $158,000 because it has sat in your captive for more than 12 months. That's the key. Hope this was helpful. Next week, we're going to talk about medical stop loss underwriting, which is an awesome topic, if you ask me. Almost as good as tax. So have a good week. We'll see you then. Bye now.